three, two, one. What's up, y'all? You're listening to the Hey Friends podcast. It's time for a key and some tea with your host, Good Journey. Before we start, I want to start off with a quote by Teddy Roosevelt. It goes, if she fails, at least she fails while daring greatly, so that her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Hey Friends podcast. I am your host, Good Journey, and I've got to say I am a ball of nervous energy because this is our very, very first podcast Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for caring at all. I know that this is like a drop in the ocean in the millions of podcasts that are available to listen to, to to download, to love. And I just want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of your world. Allow me in. Let me be a part of your world. But before we get into who I am and why I'm even on a podcast or on a mic, I just kind of wanted to talk about something. And it's being brave enough to try. Like being brave enough to try something. So like, I just feel like fear is something that holds us back from a lot of things that we really want to do, right? So when I wanted to start this podcast, it was a fear of being not relevant. There's so many good podcasts and there's so many good blogs and there's so many good influencers and there's so many good business ideas and there's so many great things already out. Like what makes mine significant? What makes mine different? What makes me different? What makes me significant? What makes people want to to join in or to listen or to care. And it's one of those things that it's just like, if you have an idea, if you've birthed an idea, as small as it may be, it's a light. And the more that you shine it, the brighter it becomes. And I feel like we live our lives in such a way where it's like, we've got these jobs and we've got these kids child that just run us ragged a little bit. And we've got these things that we have, we've got to adult, right? We have to adult a lot of the time and it's, It's like if we could just carve just a little bit of time for bliss, just a little bit of time for something that is fun and something that brings us energy and brings us life. Like who cares if it's not well received? Because at the end of the day, it's something that you love to do. So it's almost like the fear of failing shouldn't be even something we consider because who's to say that it's a failure? Like, what is your measurement of success? If your measurement of success is just like, I birthed this idea and now it's a reality, then you're a success. So for me, sitting here in my living room, lit up to this the heavens. If you could see the setup right now, I feel like I'm in the middle of a firework. There's so many lights around. But it's just like me sitting here, being brave enough to press record on this camera and turn on this microphone and just start talking. It's a win. So if nobody listens to this but me watching it on repeat on YouTube over and over again, I feel like I did something. So I'm, I'm feeling a little bit, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about this. <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm, I'm doing something right. So I feel like also like fear holds us back from a lot of things. Yes. What people think about us holds us back from a lot of things. Sure. But also just like the fear of a life of regret is more than anything else, like more than what other people think of you, because I can't, there's nothing that I'm going to do that's going to make the whole world happy. There's nothing that I'm going to do that's going to make even people in my world happy. I'm going to piss somebody off just by breathing. So I might as well just live the life that I want to live. As long as it's not hurting anybody, then just do what you got to do. Another thing I wanted to talk about too, are just some kind of limiting beliefs, some things that maybe it's not fear, right? So maybe you are a confident individual. You have no fear about what other people think of you. You just, you're that girl. You're that guy. Like you're it and nobody can tell you otherwise. Fine. But there are some things that are kind of limiting beliefs that make us feel as though we might not be the best out the gate. And for me, those limiting beliefs are comparison. Like just feeling like you, you aren't at point B when you should be at point B because this other person started with you and they're already at point C. So what is, what am I doing? Like just comparing myself so keenly aware of what other people are doing and wanting to be as great as them, not hating on them at all, but 
almost not wanting to try because I have to start at zero and they're already at 10 and I'm feeling like, dang, how long is it going to take me to get to where they are? How long is it going to take me to do? And it's just, I had to let all that go. Like everybody has to start somewhere unless you're a Nepo baby and you can do what you want and that's fine. But everybody has to start at ground zero somewhere, somehow. So it's like, just go just start those limiting beliefs are are there to kind of push put the brakes on you and maybe make, make you second guess maybe that's a coping mechanism maybe that's something that makes you feel as though you're safe like a safety gear in your world in your body but could i just say if i may that comparison limiting beliefs those kinds of things that make you feel like you shouldn't go almost ignore them like it's so difficult to find to find bliss. It's very difficult to find joy in this world that we live in. It's it's saturated with just a lot of heavy um, and something that brings you peace and joy, even though you might suck at it at first. I've tried to learn the guitar like five different times and every time it's been a no, but I'm not going to stop trying. I'm not going to not do this podcast, even though I saw a a meme yesterday on the shade room that was like if you're thinking about starting a podcast in 2023 don't and i was like they're talking about me like they know <laughs> but i don't care what you say i'm gonna do it like this is something that i've been wanting to do for so long that it's like i'm just gonna go out here and see what it is and the first one's probably gonna not be great and the second one probably not gonna be great but by the third one i'm gonna get a little bit better and I'm gonna keep getting a little bit better until I'm Wendy Williams on your asses. Like until I'm Oprah Winfrey up in this thing. Like I'm really going to keep going, keep trying, keep doing until I'm the greatest. I'm the number one. I'm your very favorite podcast. Like you can't turn on on a Monday and be like, yo, where's Good Journey at? Oh, here she go. Here she downloaded it. Like I want to be in your ear. I want to, I want us to talk and to like converse and all of those kinds of things because I feel like in life relationships with people is the most important thing like you can scale every mountain you can make every million you can make money you can do all of those kinds of things but i don't know if a life is well lived if it's lived alone in solitude it's just there's just so much joy and color and love and peace and happiness that people bring into your life that it's just like I mean, obviously guard your life a little bit because it's a lot of haters out there too, let's be very clear. But also it's one of those things where it's just like, people make life so much more fun. Friends make life so much more fun. Y'all make life so much more fun. And I just, I want y'all to be a part of mine to an extent. I'm not gonna share like too much out here, but I want us to be a part of each other's, each other's weeks a little bit and get into it. And we'll get into why in a second or how in a second, but, there's just some things that like that needed to change in me to even start this podcast in terms of where I am in my mindset. Like I grew up Nigerian American, first generation. My parents moved to the States back in the 80s and we lived in a small community in El Paso, Texas, which is a big city. Let's be very clear. El Paso is a large city, but the Nigerian community we lived in was very small, wasn't a large number of Nigerians there. And whether our parents knew it or not, they created such a bubble for us, but it, w it was positive and negative. Like it was cool to be raised in a bubble where people looked like you in a city where no one looks like you. Like El Paso is like 98% Hispanic and like 1.5% white. So the very few black people that are there and it was like the nineties. So being Nigerian wasn't cool yet. So it was African booty scratcher this and you live in a mud hut here and where's your spear checker that way. Like it wasn't cool to be Nigerian just yet um, until Wakanda came out, but that's neither here nor there. What I'm trying to say is there was like a mental block of just being compared to other Nigerian kids in this small bubble. And we all knew what each other were doing. Oh, this person got into this college. This person got this on the SAT. This person's doing this. And no matter what you did, it wasn't you against you, you versus you. Like you're running your waist and doing the best that you can. It was you versus, we'll get you over here. And you versus Nick over there. And what about, oh, and Mecca's over here doing this, that, and the third. It was a lot of that. And I feel like a lot of first generation kids have that story. Um, and it's a difficult story to have growing up, but what comes out on the other side are very high functioning, um, adults 
that have a lot of trauma that they don't recognize as trauma. And trauma might be a big word, but may have a lot of limiting beliefs, a lot of mental blocks that they don't believe are mental blocks because it's been normalized. And in my life, I definitely have a lot of mental blocks that through <laughs> years of therapy, I've been able to uncover and kind of deal with and kind of say, you know what? It doesn't matter what NECA is doing. It doesn't matter what NECA is. I'm cheering for them. Like those are my people. I'll forever cheer for those people. And th that's their race. That's their race that they're running. And I'm running a different race. I think to this day, my parents really still don't know what I do for a living. I'm in HR, by the way. Like I, I work for a tech company, a Fortune 50 tech company in HR. I work with um, like C-suite executives. Like. I mean, your girl's a big deal a little bit, you know, yeah, I know what a little bit of what I'm talking about, but every time I see my dad, like during uh, Thanksgiving or whatever, when I go home, he's like, so tell me again, what, what is it that you do? And I, I feel like he wants to be able to compare, right? What I'm doing with his friends and say, oh, but Ijoma's doing this and this and this. And he wants to wear that badge of honor, like all Nigerian parents want. And I want to give it to him, but child, how many times I got to explain to you what I do? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired, daddy. I'm sorry. Love you. Okay, so I've gone into that whole dissertation of all of this, and I haven't even really introduced myself. So if you've made it this far, many thanks. My name is Ijama. I go by Good Journey on all socials, two E's, no Y, G-O-O-D-J-O-U-R-N-E-E, -E. Good Journey. And that's actually the meaning of my name, Ijama. It means Good Journey. And it's it's almost like a prayer in my life. It's like there's been a lot of ups and downs in my life, a lot of turns and twists and a lot of different things that I was I was not expecting because I went on the road less traveled. I chose that road. And because I chose that road, it was a little bit bumpy, right? Um, but I came out on the other side and listen, I'm still traveling. I'm, I'm still living, I'm still traveling, I'm still making mistakes, I'm still doing my thing. But I feel like the journey, when I look back on the scorched earth behind me, it's been good. And I'm so glad that like Nigerian people are so intentional on how they name their children. And I just want to say, like, I am so happy to be on this podcasting journey. Like I've been an influencer for a couple of years. Like I said, I work in tech as an HR um, exec. I have a kid. I'm a single mom. I live in Houston, Texas, which I've got to say, Houston is probably the best city in the South. I don't know about the Yankees up North. Can't really speak to it. I've been to New York a couple times. I don't know what y'all doing up there. But what I, what I will say in the South, Houston's got them. Barnum. But please don't move here. It's full. It's a lot of traffic. Don't come here. But come visit for a good time. If you're looking for a good time, come to Houston. We love it down here. So let me ask, answer the question that everybody's asking. Why are you starting a podcast? And the answer to that question is simply, I don't know. I have no idea. It's not like I need another extra thing in my life to do. I have a lot that I do. As you can see, I ran down all of my things that I do. Oh, and I'm also a realtor, so I sell homes. Like, I'm, I'm the girl with multiple streams of income, a lot of jobs, and I'm just trying to find things, not trying to find things. I'm intentionally doing things that make me happy. I'm intentionally doing things that bring me joy. And I was on the Champagne Wise podcast for maybe a season, maybe half a season. Um, and I was doing like the, the celebrity segment. What do we call it? Hot Topics. I was doing the Hot Topics segment. And I found so much joy in doing that. Like I, maybe it's just because I like to hear myself on the mic. That's probably it. I like to hear myself on the mic. I like to see myself in the video because, oh, because a girl is cute. This is cute. I do know that. <laughs> and I also like celebrity news. I feel like there's certain things that I'm good at um, celebrity news I'm just like super into and just random random facts about things but anyway all that to say I'm doing things that I love to do and podcasting is one of them so do I have like this huge platform with a bunch of followers no have I been on a red carpet have I done a movie am I famous in some kind of way not yet you know what I'm saying like I don't have the credentials really I'm no Joe Rogan thank god but I'm no like Angie Martinez yet but I'm doing something that makes me happy. And I'm hoping that it turns into something. And if it doesn't, what did I lose? I'm sitting in my living room with a microphone, something that I would be doing literally anyway. If you know anything about me, 
you know that I just love to be at home. I love to bring friends over, have a cocktail, have a drink, eat good food, and just kiki. Like, just have a good time. And that's what this podcast is. I'm inviting you into my home. I wish I could share a drink on the next episode. We're going to be having, you know, some cocktails. We'll, we'll have some drinks. We'll have some, like... I won't eat on the mic. I'll spare you guys. Don't worry. But we'll we'll sit and talk like I'm inviting you over to my house and we're just having a good time. So I feel like who I am, we've explained. Why do I have a podcast? We've explained. I don't know if you have any more questions, but I don't want it to be so formal. I want us to free, fall, free talk, just have a free conversation here and enjoy each other's company while we have it. So that's a little bit about me. What, you, what can you expect from this podcast? I guess that's probably a good thing to talk about. I have a lot of topics. I'm going to bring some friends over. I've cultivated such an amazing village. Like my close, you know how, you know, you, you have people that orbit you. So think of like your friends as a solar system. You're the sun because you are your own sun. You're your center of the universe. And you have people, and child, please don't, don't come for me because I don't know, like, I know that the earth is a third rock from the sun, but I don't know what the first, second, fourth, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know what all the rocks, like how close they are to the sun, but forget about all that. And just think about like, you're the sun. The planet closest to you is your close group of friends, your small circle, your itty bitty village, maybe five people in their max. And then the next planet is your acquaintances. And then the next planets after that. And I have cultivated such a great solar system around me of people that are incredible. We've got dentists, we've got entrepreneurs, we've got other podcasters, we've got doctors, lawyers, tech, you know, people that are opening tech companies with just friends, just people. And I'm going to have them come on the show and talk and we'll have a conversation. And you're invited into our home, you're invited into our key, and we're just going to have a talk and have a good time. We'll talk about celebrity news, we'll talk about your news, and we'll get to that segment in a minute. But I feel like this podcast is really just all about connection, being connected to a solar system. So if you don't have a strong solar system, count me in as one of yours. The Hey, Fred, the hey Friends podcast is your friend and we're going to come into your solar system and we're going to have a good time. So with that said, let's jump into some tea. So anytime you hear that sound, just know that it's tea time and I have a couple of celebrity news that I want to share with you a couple of things of celebrity news. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So the first thing is this Meg and Tori, Megan Thee Stallion, Tori Lanes, and Kelsey Harris situation. So by the time that you hear this recording, the verdict is already out. We already know that Tori is guilty. And we, first of all, let's, let's, let's back up. I knew, and anybody that believes black women knew, that Tori was guilty off the rip. Let's just be very, very clear. But he wanted to make this messy and go through a jury of his peers. And guess what? A jury of his peers says it's 23 years in prison and you're about to get deported. Back to Canada you go. Because you tried to mess with us and we didn't like it. We didn't like it. You tried to play in our face and we didn't like it. And the other thing was he really tried to play in Meg's face. He dropped a whole, was it an album or a couple of songs where he was just calling Meg a liar. He was doing, he was do thou protest too much. He was doing too much. And I'm glad he got caught up because karma and that's his karma. What goes around is going to come right on around. And that's what happened. So a couple of days ago, well, a couple of days after the verdict was read, the courts were allowing people to start releasing some of the things that were initially held back. One of those things was a call that Tori made from jail to Kelsey, Megan's ex-best friend that was also in the car and there when the shooting happened. And essentially, I don't know if Tori like is slow or I don't know if like he just doesn't hear things good but it's the recordings in jail like when you're on a call it'll say that this is being recorded like this call is being recorded da, 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 and it's something that happens a lot like it'll say it a couple of times on the call meanwhile Tori's over here apologizing he didn't say for what I'll give him that he didn't say oh, I'm sorry for shooting Meg 
but the way he talked about it was like, I was so drunk. I didn't even know what was happening. She's never going to talk to me again. So if you use the power of deductive reasoning, which unfortunately social media just really doesn't have, you can tell that he did what he did. Whatever they say he did, he did that thing. Like it's very, very clear. And I was like scouring through because some one thing about me is I have time. I, I have time to go through the comments. So if you guys make a bad comment, I'm going to see it and I'm probably going to respond. And if you make a good comment, I'm going to see it and we're going to be best friends. So anyway, I was scouring the comment of the shade room, the comments of the shade room and Hollywood Unlocked and literally any blog that dropped this. I was kind of looking through the comments and it's kind of split. It's kind of split 80-20. I feel like the people that believed Megan up front continue to believe Megan and they're kind of like rubbing people's faces in it that didn't believe Megan. And then the other 20% believe Tori and it's like nothing is going to change their mind. And it's such a dumb place to be like, how stupid do you have to be to, to, to accept new information? Like this information, fair enough. Let's just assume this information was not available when you made your initial decision. Fair. But now new information is being introduced and you're like, uh, I don't care. I don't listen to new. Inf like th that's not even a, how smart people live life. Like, how are you still walking around this earth and not being hit by a car yet? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me that when new information is introduced, then you use your power of deductive reasoning to say, oh, you know what? Initially, I was wrong and, and I thought I was right. But now this new information came in and I'm going I'm to make a change. I'm going to change my mind because now I have new I have better information to change my mind. Like that's just how we process information as adults. But I feel like I don't know if it's people just love clout too much or the Internet is just a weird and wonky place. But if new information comes out that changes your view, it's okay to change your mind. Like it's okay to just be like, oh snap, I was wrong. And now I know differently and now I'm right. Like you don't just have to die dumb. Anyway, good for you, Megan. I'm glad. I hope you get some rest and I hope you get, um, just you feel better because sis went through it in a major way and i feel bad for her but i'm i'm happy that you know she's coming on the other side now we got to go over after uh what is his name carl crawford 1501 her previous management prior to rock nation i'm just hoping that she's able to iron that out and then she can really just be free from all of that shouts out to you megan the stallion okay the other story that i have and i'll kind of keep this brief because i feel like i'm running over time and i should be looking at time but i'm not um maybe i should get a producer if you're interested in producing the Good Journey, um, the Hey Friends podcast with me, Good Journey, hit me up in the DMs and we can talk something out. Okay, my last story is about Bill Cosby. I'm not going to get into the whole thing about Bill Cosby because there's new news. We all know what happened. He was like this holier than thou comedian. He had the Cosby show, which everybody was a Huxtable. Every black person was a Huxtable or aspired to be a Huxtable. And he did such great things for the culture. But then that Me Too movement child, that got him real good. He was using them quaaludes in the 80s and just doing the most. Anyway, he spent some jail time. He's since been exonerated. He's now free. He's outside. And he's planning... <laughs> He's planning to go on tour in 2023. Now, before y'all come for Bill Cosby's neck, understand that in the entertainment industry, comedians, um, recording artists, they make their money on the road. They make their money by touring, tickets, merch. Bill Cosby is down bad like i'm sure his net worth is just plummeted to next to nothing it's not like he can just like go be a cashier at costco like what's he finna do and it's not like i don't know if he could pull social security child i don't know what happens in terms of just like the guild or if, if he's if he's even still in the guild like the sag screen actors guild where they have their um insurance and all those kinds of things just to keep them going he might have gotten booted from there right so you have to think this man is still living he's older now like what's he gonna do for money so this could be a cash grab which person uh, people have to eat everybody's got to eat go ahead and go i don't know who's buying tickets boosie said he's gonna buy a ticket so maybe if you want to go to like a louisiana show boosie might be there but i don't know who's gonna buy tickets to a cosby show because I'm, I'm certain there's going to be a lot of people protesting his shows there's going to be a lot of hecklers at his shows it's going to be a lot going maybe I'm, now that i'm talking about it maybe this might actually be fun it might be a fun thing to do 
But I don't know who's like gonna just give Bill Cosby money like that. I don't know. Anyway, that's something to look forward to if you're trying to be a hot girl in the summer and you're trying to see what um, Bill Cosby's up to. He's gonna be on tour. And like I said, Boosie might be there. So get your cute little summer fit and go out and watch. <laughs> Okay, that's all for Celebrity. I hope you enjoyed. There's going to be most more stories next week. Um, but let's get into your questions, my favorite part of the show, your questions and your story times. Let's get into that next. Our very first question on our very first podcast comes from, I think you said he wanted me to keep him anonymous. That's fine. So an anonymous dude from Atlanta. And he writes, hey, good journey. I have a question for you. Can men and women both get away with this in the workplace? For context, I'm a male. And a few weeks back, I got into a debate with a female colleague. One of our senior managers came in from Atlanta to visit the office. Oh, he's not from Atlanta. The person came in from Atlanta. Where are you from? Anyway, um, he comes in quarterly or so, and every time he does, most of the women in the office all start talking about how handsome he is and how they wish he were single. So the most recent time this happened, I made the comment that if I was a man, that if I, as a man, made the same comments about a female senior manager, I'd likely get into a lot of trouble. My female colleague straight away got defensive and told me that I was wrong. And in actual fact, it's often the language men choose to use rather than what they say that gets them into trouble. I, however, maintained, regardless of language, I, as a man, feel if I was to simply say that senior manager is beautiful, I wish she was single, and someone else overheard, I'd be putting myself at risk of getting into trouble. My colleague disagrees. Who is right? Now I'm going to go ahead and put my HR hat on on this question. Um, because as an HR executive, I don't see this a lot because I don't really deal with interpersonal employer relations issues too much. I'm more of a strategic HR executive. However, in my tenure in being in this profession, I've seen a lot of stuff. And I will say in this instance, both of you are right and both of you are wrong. <laughs> Let me explain. So when we talk about harassment in the workplace, it's not about the intentions of a person. It's how it's perceived by the person that is receiving the information. So if I'm talking to you and I say, hey, you look beautiful today. I could just mean it as innocuously as you look beautiful and you can hear it as, oh, this person's trying to get with me. It doesn't matter how I, it does not matter how I'm saying it. It's, it only matters on how you receive it. So I'm saying all this to say, oftentimes women have a more keen sense of being hit on. They have a more keen sense of feeling unsafe in a situation. So they're on higher alert than a man would be. Like, so, you know, you can say something to a man and just kind of glides off his back, maybe because he's not paying attention, maybe because he doesn't care, probably because he's not paying attention. And you could say the same thing to a woman and she would feel a type of way because of her story, where she came from, like she's just more keenly aware of that. So for you, sir, for you to say something like the same thing they're saying to a man, if you said that to a woman, chances are, and I can't speak for all women, I don't know. All I can talk about is what I've seen in the past. Chances are the woman is just gonna be more keenly aware and not appreciate it at all than the man would be. So could you say that? Sure you could. And you can mean it as plainly and as innocently as you want, but it just depends on how that person receives it. So are you right? Yes. Are you wrong? Yes. Hope that helps. <laughs> and the last one is we have a story time. So the story times are fun because honestly, I live such a chill life. It's so even keeled. It's so just like not a lot going on a lot of the time. So when I get with friends and we have our little keys at the house, I'm always so interested in like, 
what you got going on, what are you talking about, like what are things happening in your life? And so we call them story times. And we'll send each other text messages with the eyes, just like the eye emoji. It's like, okay, so what's happening? And then you go into you launch into your story time. So on the and you can submit your story times and questions to info at heyfriendspod.com or you can DM me. I'd appreciate it more if you email me because child DMs is a lot. So email us at info at heyfriendspod.com for your story times and your questions. So let me get into our first story time on our first podcast episode and we could just have a key. Okay. So hey good journey. I'm excited for your new podcast and can't wait to hear all your episodes. Thanks, boo. I have a story time. Please keep me anonymous. Got you. When I was in college, I was a good girl. Me too. Biochem major, graduated top of her class type good girl. Okay, we see you, biochem. What many didn't know is that at the time I was dating a drug dealer. He dealt in pills mostly and did very well for himself. He would give me money every other week, so I was stunned in college, okay? I know that's right. Okay, so well, one day we were going to the movies, driving in his car, and he saw a man that owed him $5,000 riding on a scooter. <laughs> Tell me why this man followed the guy in a scooter in the car. So you're talking about y'all had a low speed chase? That's cute. <laughs> we got all the way to Scooter Guy's house, and I guess the guy knew we were following him because he, emerge- he, comes- he emerges with a whole gun. What? (laughs) I was so scared. I'm scared reading this. I was screaming in the car, begging this man to turn around and leave. $5,000 wasn't worth my life as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, girl, go away from there. My man got out of the car to try and defuse. Why? No, hold on. Why did he leave the car? Because I I would have driven. Well, I guess he could have shot at the car and that would have been. Okay, let me just keep reading. That's fine. My man got out of the car to try and defuse the situation. And I was so beside myself that even I got out of the car to try to get my man back in the car. This sounds like a whole mess. Somebody's getting shot. Go away from there. Luckily, no one was injured, but I've never been that scared in my whole life. It was an out-of-body experience. It must have been because it wasn't nothing you could do to get me out of that car. I'll tell you that right now. It's not. Um... Let me keep reading the story. I'm interrupting. I'm sorry. Okay. (laughs) We ended up breaking up shortly after that. Later, my ex-boyfriend went to prison for seven years, uh, not for dealing, but for armed robbery and kidnapping. I'm not, I'm not judging, but I'm judging a little. I'm not judging, kind of. He claims he didn't do it though. That's fair. Luckily, he was mad entrepreneurial while he was dealing, he'd stash $100,000 in his safe at his home. So when he got out of prison, he was able to open a trucking business. Today, he's married with children and has a successful business. So all's well that ends well, I guess. Hope you enjoyed. Signed, I can never be a ride or die. <laughs> she said, I could never be a ride or die. Me neither, because that sounds like a lot. It's too much, actually, as a matter of fact. Well, I hope you enjoyed our very first episode of the Hey Friends podcast. I had a blast talking to y'all and just hanging out for a few minutes so listen follow us at hey friends pod one on all socials i'm talking about tiktok i'm talking about youtube we're on instagram um you can follow me at good journey it's spelled with two e's and no y on social media as well um we got fashions on there we got lifestyle stuff it's a lot of fun for a follow. Um, you can submit your questions and story times to our email at info at heyfriendspod.com. So until next week, guys, goodbye. Hey friends, let's keep the conversation going. Join the party on all socials, TikTok, IG, and YouTube at HeyFriendsPod1. And you can follow my personal page at Good Journey. Two E's, no Y. See y'all in the comment section. Bye.